I'm Dominique and you're watching Dollar Design. Hey Dollar Designers, Dominique here and today we're going to make shadow boxes. <laughs> now something really cool about shadow boxes is that they're very, very versatile. However, you probably realize if you check out major retailers that they can be pretty expensive. Well here on Dollar Designs, <laughs> we're going to take a few simple supplies and turn them into a really awesome, really inexpensive shadow box. So you won't want to miss it. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned. Supplies you will need are a wooden picture frame, foam board, X-Acto knife, scissors, glue gun and glue sticks, scrapbook paper, Elmer's glue, a ruler, pen, Ziploc bag, and cutting surface. Now your first step is going to be to take your frame and remove the glass. One thing you should know about the frame is that it's probably best to use a wooden frame over a plastic or a porcelain frame. I say this because the wooden frames tend to have the really nice metal prongs as well as they tend to have the glass inset into the frame rather than sitting on top. After removing the glass, I lay the glass piece onto a piece of foam board and trace it. This rectangular foam board will soon serve as the very back piece of my shadow box. Now it's time to cut it out. Make sure that you put a cutting mat or some sort of protective surface under your foam board. Here you can see that I'm using a piece of cardboard from a box I had laying around, but feel free to use whatever you have on hand. So once you have that cutting mat or protective surface out, you're going to take your X-Acto knife and ruler and cut along the drawn lines. It's worth mentioning that if you are not using a metal ruler, make sure your plastic or wooden ruler has a metal edge so that your X-Acto knife doesn't cut into the plastic or wooden ruler material. Now onto the sides. I decided to work on the two sides first, got those glued on, and then worked on the top and bottom pieces. I knew I wanted the depth of the shadow box to be three inches, but I determined the height based on the rectangular shadow box back that we just made a moment ago. It ended up being about 10 inches tall, which makes sense considering it is an 8x10 frame. Here you can see I've measured off two 3x10 rectangles, and now I'm cutting them out. So here are my two 3 by 10 sides. In just a little bit, I'm going to take my glue gun and glue them down just like this. But stop right there. <laughs> Before I get that far, I'm going to mark off the points on the inside of my foam board where these two pieces will go. I'm doing this because these two marked off points give me the length of my top and bottom pieces. So now that I have the length of my top and bottom pieces, I might as well go ahead and get those cut out. Just like the side pieces, I want the depth to be 3 inches. So my measurement ended up being somewhere around 3 inches by 7 inches and 3 quarters. So here I have all of my sides, the top and bottom pieces, and the two sides. Now we can get to the gluing. At this point I am simply focusing on getting all four sides attached to the shadow box back. After I get them all glued down, then I will go back through and attach the sides to one another with more glue. So I have a pretty sound structure here, but I want to give it some extra support. So what I'm going to do is take some cardstock and cut it into strips. So once I have my four strips of about, let's say, three to four inches by two inches, I'm going to use that as a brace along the outside of my shadow box. You can see here that I'm taking my strips, folding them in half, and then putting them in the very corners of my box and gluing them down. Using cardstock as well as my glue gun, I'm adding some really sound support to the shadow box. Now 
Now we can get into the seriously fun part, and that is the decorative part. The options for the mediums you can use here are truly endless, but I went with some textured scrapbook paper that I had on hand. There really isn't any rhyme or reason to how I went about doing it. I kind of treated this like a Christmas present and just focused on wrapping the outside of the box. may be able to see that I went ahead and used Elmer's glue instead of a glue gun to adhere the paper to the box. There's really no rhyme or reason again, this is just something I chose to do in the moment. we're going to put a piece of scrapbook paper on the inside of the shadow box. This is what everybody's going to see from the front of your shadow box. So you want something cute, lively, floral, whatever. You know, this is what people are going to see. And it also needs to work with whatever you're going to put on the inside of your shadow box for decoration. So here you can see I have a cute red piece of floral scrapbook paper. And to make it fit to size, I'm using that same glass frame that I used in the beginning. Now it's not going to fit perfectly because you lost a few centimeters in your sides. However, it is a good template and you can always go back afterwards and trim off any excess. Once you have the inside piece cut to size, just use a bit of glue and slap that puppy in there. <laughs> now it's time to pull that wooden frame back out. As you can see, I'm really pulling those metal prongs back, getting those out of the way. Once I've done that, I'm going to slide my glass back into the frame, and then I'm going to take my shadow box and fit it snugly and securely inside of the frame. It may take a little bit of elbow grease to get the shadow box backing into the frame, but that's definitely a good thing because you want it to fit as securely and snugly as possible. Depending on how heavy the items inside of your shadow box are, as well as how secure you feel this needs to be, you can go over it with the glue gun and really get it in there. Voila! Here's our lovely, perfectly personalized shadow box. Now I'm going to show you an even more affordable option, as well as something that you can customize further. Option number two, your shadow box back is going to be the exact same. Good old fashioned foam board, glue, and cardstock. The only difference on option two is the frame. This frame is going to be made out of foam board just like the back. To do this, I need to cut out a rectangle or whatever size you've chosen for your shadow box. It is important to note that the frame should be a bit bigger than the base. Since my back was about 8 by 10, I went about 10 by 12 on the foam board frame. Once you have your frame cut out, we need to cut out the center. I made this really simple and measured off 2 inches in from the outside all around the frame. Once I completed this, I whipped out my X-Acto knife and got to cutting. Now it's time to decorate the frame. Again, I chose to use scrapbook paper, but you can go glitter crazy, decoupage crazy, it's really up to you. Here's my frame. Once you're done decorating the frame, we need to add some type of transparent film. I thought long and hard about this, knowing I wanted something thicker. What did I come up with? None other than a big freezer size Ziploc bag. As you can see, I'm just cutting out the side of the freezer bag that doesn't have anything printed on it. This is a good idea for any craft where you need a piece of film that's small and inexpensive. So now that I've cut out the side good for using, I'm going to cut it a little bit further to make it fit to the frame. Now for some gluing! <laughs> That's pretty self-explanatory. I simply flip the frame over to the back side and I'm using my glue gun to glue it down. So here you can see the completed frame. 
At this point, you're going to take your shadow box backing and put whatever you want decorative inside of the box. Then I'm simply going to glue gun down the front of the frame to the back of the shadow box. So that's the craft, ladies and gents. I hope that you love the end result and that it was very easy for you to follow along. What I love about these shadow boxes is that they are completely personalized. You can add whatever you want to make it yours. Scrapbook paper, spray paint, decoupage, you name it, you can do it. So I hope you all enjoyed and until next time, see ya!